The 1921 inspection report made the Vaughan pullet socks up. The school began to grow, and by 1923, there were more than 188 boys and 10 teachers. And by 1926, the school was sending its first pupils to Cambridge University. And the first of many Old Vaughanians was ordained priest. But just as Canon Driscoll's efforts were being rewarded, he fell ill, and in 1927, he died. His place was taken by another priest, Monsignor Canon John Vance. Dr Vance, as he was known, was to lead the school for 20 years. He had a formidable reputation, Dr Vance. The headmaster, Dr Vance, we well, didn't get on too well. He spoke to God, but he didn't speak much to the boys. It was he who, I think, uh, actually wrote down in a, in a minute to, to his staff that he saw no reason why children should know his name. He told the masters of the school, I should be known as either the canon or the doctor. Well, he was clearly an austere and distant man, but he was a great educationist and greatly expanded the school's ambitions. He instilled in the boys his love for the English language and the importance of pronunciation as a passport to a better job. And because Dr Vance wanted the boys to learn to talk proper, properly, he set up an elocution prize. In 1937, the judge was the poet laureate himself, John Macefield, and the winner was a boy called Richard Green. He went on to become a household name and a Hollywood superstar, and played Robin Hood in the famous television series. Dr Vance's passion for pronunciation rubbed off on another pupil, Morris Edelston, who went on to become a famous football commentator. And there was much excitement in 1936 when Edelston and another Old Vaughanian, Bernard Joy, played football for England at the 1936 Olympics. Bernard Joy was the captain. The score was strict. Very. He asked boys who were left-handed to turn up with a medical certificate to give them permission to do so. And um, speaking as a left-hander myself, I think that's probably a bit harsh. The window got broken, which I was standing nearby, and I was never given the opportunity of refuting what had happened. Dr Vance said, one whacking boy, and off you go. There was corporal punishment, but Dr Vance was always keen to avoid it wherever possible. And his attitude was summed up by his own words. Punishment appeals to fear and generates cowardice. I'd rather that we appeal to duty and manliness. So we built on the Catholic traditions of the school by introducing the Altar Society, weekly confessions and benediction. He gave some very crisp addresses uh, after benediction. This had a lasting effect on me, actually. He did encourage us to think about other people rather than ourselves. I met him when he visited the school came to present a bust of himself and we kept it in the school in the reception area until one awful day when a child put a dog in uh, or attached it to his lips and so it had to be removed from there after that. Doctor had strong views on a lot of things, especially music. Could nothing be done to give the boys a love of real music? Then they'd be free from the villainy of jazz bands.